All right, so now we're going to look at a system where we have to use, uh, actually you have to use calculus to find the center of mass. Um, this is on, on page 187. Uh, so if you look at the prompt here, it says this rod is 10 centimeters long. So there it is. Uh, it has a mass density given by uh, lambda of x. So that's going to be the character we're using for mass density here. Lambda of x equals 2x squared grams per centimeter. So let's just stop and think about what that means. So if you, what that's saying, if that's telling you how much, how many grams per, per centimeter the thing is at different locations. So if you plug in x equals zero here, here the density of the object on this side is going to be, you know, zero grams per centimeter. So in other words, it starts out, you know, effectively massless and then slowly starts to gain, you know, mass per length. If you look at the far right hand side, which is x equals 10, then you would say uh, the mass per length is 2 times 10 squared or 200 grams per centimeter. So over here it's 200 grams per centimeter. So the idea here is it's pretty heavy. Uh, each chunk of the rod is pretty heavy on this side. And then as you move this way, it gets lighter and lighter. So it'd be something like, you know, you've got a, a stick that's like mostly lead here. And then you start to like alloy like aluminum into it and more and more and more and more aluminum until you get over to the, you know, the far end. Or maybe if we're going all the way to like zero, it'd be like uh, lead and then start mixing like foam uh, into it or putting holes in it or something. Um, so it's continuously varying um, how much each bit weighs. Well, so now it says find the total mass of the rod. Well, the, the problem is each little chunk of mass uh, of the rod is, it, has a different mass um, because the mass density is completely is totally changing. Well, so what you do to find the total mass is as before, you'd say, well, the mass total, that would be the sum of little chunks of mass. So you could say like sum over I of M sub I. And that's what we did when things were discrete. So if there were like two pieces here or five pieces, um, but this thing, what we're going to do is actually treat this like there's an infinite number of little pieces. And so what you do is you break this thing up into, instead of ca calling each little chunk of mass m sub i, uh, each little chunk of mass we're going to call dm. So instead of taking the sum of a finite number of little masses, what we have to do is take the infinite sum of infinitesimally small um, masses, dm. So this is just true by logic. Mass is the sum of the little bits of mass. That's literally what this uh, reads. If you're reading this in English, mass is the sum of all the infinitely small bits of mass. Um, so what, we're, what we need to do in the challenge here always is to figure out how to write how much just this piece weighs. And so that's what we're going to do here because we don't, we don't know what we're integrating yet. We have to actually figure out what we're adding up before we can add it up. And so what you do is realize that this is a little bit of mass. And so what that then, like dimensionally, what that would have to be is like a mass per length times a length. So I'm gonna actually write that out in English. And then, well, you can look at what we're given. It turns, well, like, gosh, it'd be nice if we knew the mass per length. Well, it turns out we do. It's, two, it's 2x squared. So we have that. So the mass per length is 2x squared. And then you have to multiply that by how long it is. Uh, well, well, this thing is infinitesimally small. And so what you do is you call the length of it like a little wiggle in x. So that's dx. So it's 2x squared dx. Right? So it's worth writing again, actually, by, like, by itself. So each little chunk, I'm going to actually write it up here, dm is 2x squared dx. But what's of the utmost importance is that you remember what this actually is. The meaning of this, 2x squared dx, that is the mass of this one tiny chunk. Okay? And so once you know the mass of one of them, then you can then you have some hope of adding them all up. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. So you just substitute for the dm. You put in, well, we need to add up from the left side of the rod to the right side the all the dms well dm is 2x squared dx okay um i'm really making a big deal about this i want you guys to get in the habit of writing down the thing that you're adding up before you try to integrate because i want you to understand what you're integrating um so we go 0 to 10 of 2x squared dx so pretty easy what we need to do 
is then take the antiderivative of this part. So the antiderivative of 2x squared, we know it's got to go like x cubed. And then well, we want we want this to be a 2 in the front when we take the derivative and go backwards. So this is actually going to have to be um, 2 over 3, or 2 thirds x cubed. Um, and then we have to evaluate it at 0, or at 10 and at 0. Um, so this is going to be 2 thirds of 10 cubed minus 2 thirds of 0 cubed. So 10 cubed is 1,000, so it's 2 thirds of 1,000. So it's like 667 grams, let's say. 667 grams is how much that thing weighs. Um, so just to idiot check it, if the whole thing were 200 grams per centimeter, um, well, the thing's 10 centimeters long, why then it would weigh 2,000 um, grams. But the mass density actually grows like, like parabolically, like it starts light and it grows and grows and grows. Um, and so it turns out this thing is, is 667, that's the mass of the whole thing. Okay. So the second part of this is actually now to find the center of mass of this thing. Um, and so what helps with it is if you remember how you do it when it's, um, when you have a, a discrete objects. So if you remember what we did before, the center of mass is found by uh, adding up. So you take the sum of, well, each position times its mass. So you'd say, well, uh, the sum of uh, x sub i, m sub i. So you're taking each position and multiplying by how much mass is there. Um, and then all over um, the total mass, sum over i, m sub i. Okay. Well, so if this were a discrete object, so I'm going to write that down, discrete. By the way, this is the discrete, like E-T-E, -E. discrete, like D-A-S-C-R-E-E-T, -E -E that means like on the down low, like keep it on the down low, but that's not this type of discrete. This is discrete meaning it comes in, in individual chunks. Um, but we don't have a discrete um, distribution of mass here. We actually have a continuous one. It's continuously varying. So, so rather than, just like we did before, rather than doing an, a finite number of bits, we actually have an infinite number of little bits. So these sums need to become infinite sums. So instead of a sum over i, we have to do a, an integral of x dm. So the mass becomes a little bit of mass. And then, um, so we're taking what this means, and by the way, what this top part meant is right, taking each mass and multiplying by its position. That's what's happening here. You're taking each little bit of mass and multiplying by its position and then adding them up, right? Um, and then the bottom, of course, is just the sum of all the little bits of mass. Well, so now let's apply it to this problem. Well, the denominator, we already know, it's the sum of all the little bits of mass. Well, we, we just did that up, up at the top. Um, so I'm going to put that 667 down in the bottom, like we already found the total mass. Um, the top, though, we actually have to, we haven't done that yet. So we have to integrate, again, from the, well, let's just substitute in. This is x times, and then you have to look up what dm was. Well, the nice thing is we already have that. If you look up above, it was 2x squared dx. So let's put that in there. So you have 2x squared dx and we have to integrate that guy from the left side to the right side, zero to 10. Um, so if we go down the next line here, um, well this x times two x squared, well that's just two x cubed. So nothing really um, much more difficult here. So we're just going zero to 10 of two x cubed dx over that 667. Um, so that's going to be, I'm going to write the 667 in the front, 1 over 667. Okay, now we have to take the antiderivative 2x cubed. So, well, it's got to go like x to the fourth, but then we don't want it to be 4x cubed when we take the derivative, we only want 2x cubed. So this must be a 1 half in the front. Yeah, that checks out. When you bring the 4 down, that becomes a 2. And then you go from 0 to 10. So finally, almost done. Um, so that equals, we've got this kind of pesky 1 over 667 floating around. And then we have to do 1 half of, uh, what is that, 10,000. So you have 1 half of 10,000 uh, minus, and then, well, 0, but I'll just minus 1 half of 0. Here, I'll, I'll just write it out for this one time. 
one half of zero. Kind of didn't need to write that. So this is actually 5,000 divided by 667. 5,000 divided by 667. Um, so let's see what that uh, comes out to be. If we say 5,000 divided by 667, we get um, 7.5, so 7.50. Uh, was it centimeters? Yeah, 7.50 centimeters. So that's the center of mass. So the center of mass is kind of shading toward um, this side. So in this case, the here would be the middle, and then the center of mass happens to be here at 7.5 centimeters. And there's the um, that's the actual center of mass. A um, little bit of a reminder, center of mass does not mean that you have the same amount of mass on both sides. Um, in fact, if we stop and think about it, let's think about this. Which side has to be heavier to the, to the right of this thing or to the left? Because um, they're not going to have the same weight. Um, and if you stop and think about it, the, the mass, this side can get away with being um, lighter because you have more mass that's like, you have mass that's far away. Um, so if you kind of figure out how much the two sides weigh, actually this last little bit here is, is actually going to be heavier than, um, than the rest, um, than, the, than the side that's over here. Um, so just kind of hitting the high points, the hardest part of this is, is usually coming up with this dm so by logic, you can always say something like, well, you know, the mass is the sum of the little bits of mass. Um, just like we could say, um, you know, that like, uh, I'm mean, being cheeky here, but just saying that like Dr. Patsko is the sum of the little bits of Dr. Patsko. Right, so you can always write that, but then the key is to figure out how to write a formula for how much each little bit ways okay um, well so with a, with the stick we're saying the mass is the sum of the little bits of mass and so I had to go through this bit about learning how much each little bit of the of the stick weighed so it's mass per length times length mass per length were given and the length you take to be uh, infinitesimally small um, infinitesimal I should say um, right on